Welcome back aviation enthusiasts and fellow aircraft builders. It's been a while since I posted a video and uh, the main reason is that my bending brake was still giving me problems. If you recall in my last tooling update I redid the brake with solid rivets and it appeared to be functioning okay but I did some longer channels and realized that it was introducing a bit of a twist down the length. Uh, of the longer parts which I didn't really find was acceptable. So uh, the last numerous weeks, probably four to six weeks, I've been scratching my head trying to figure out how I'm actually going to, um, how I was going to redo this. And since I now have the welder, I decided to go ahead and make this a much more uh, robust and versatile design. As you can see down here, I've added a piece of uh, 5 8 by, I think that's 4 inches, uh, mild steel. So it's a very big, heavy slab of steel. Notched it out and put these uh, barrel style hinges at each end. And these are, uh, it's a 3 quarter inch steel rod with uh, 3 quarter, or 3 quarter inch solid steel rod with a 3 quarter inch schedule 40 pipe. So the difference between rot, solid rod and tubing is that it's uh, specced or measured by the outer diameter, so 3 quarter inches here, whereas pipe is specced based on the inner diameter. So a Schedule 40 3 quarter inch pipe has a 1 8 inch wall thickness all the way around. The inner di diameter is 3 quarters of an inch, so it fits these 3 quarter inch rods. And I had to get uh, some electro weld pipe so that there wasn't a seam on the inside of the pipe so that I could slip the rod in and out. So I cut apart my uh, original design, drilled all those solid rivets out, and um, it took some doing to get these hinges welded without you know, having too much shrinkage problems and things like that, but I was able to get it all squared away. It did make my my, the bending area of my brake about one foot shorter. These are six inches wide, these hinges. And uh, I increased the... Uh, leverage of the handle by extending the handle quite a bit and then building it kind of like a truss set up here so that it spreads the load. Now uh, it still has some flex especially in and out this way because now there's no hinge all the way down the middle keeping everything together but with this heavy piece of metal in here I'm hoping that uh, it will work uh, quite well. Uh, furthermore what I've done is drilled and tapped holes all along uh, the face of it that made up to this other piece of angle that used to be the bending arm. And so for the high leverage uh, pieces and to add some um, flex or some rigidity to the in and out flexing that it does, I can bolt that angle to the face of this and it gives me extra leverage, leverage and more rigidity. So one of the benefits or of this redesign is that it enables you to bend uh, items like this. So this is a, a test pattern for the um, main gear channel. So this sits underneath the plane like this, uh, like this rather. And um, the main landing gear bolts up into this channel under the fuselage. So this runs the width of the fuselage and it's 1105 millimeters long when it's a finished part. Now this is only a 20 millimeter wide test piece. But the advantage you have with this type of bending brake is that when you first bend these flanges, the outer flanges here, they can hang over the edge of this bending arm while you, uh, when you go to bend that piece up. So with the original brake with that three inch piece of uh, angle iron on there, there was no clearance for these little flanges when they were sitting like this on the brake before I would bend them up upward. And there's a numerous uh, channels like hat section style channels and a few other things that have this style, this style bend to it. And with the old brake, there was just no way you could bend it. You could bend that kind of a part. So what I'm worried about with this now is, you know, this piece is easy to bend. It's only 20, 20 millimeters wide. I mean, I could probably bend eighth inch aluminum on this brake if it was only 20 millimeter wide to this pattern. But because it's 1105 millimeters across, that's approximately three and a half feet, uh, I need a whole lot of leverage to do that. So what I'm gonna do is bolt the, 
the leverage flange here back to the brake and bend these flanges with the just the 20 mil 20 these are actually 23 millimeter flanges clamped in the edge like that because I need all of these bolts secured to hold everything tightly and of course this piece is wider than the distance between my bolts so I would have to lose some area to try to keep that all together so what I'm going to do is bend these parts these outer flanges first I'll then uh, tuck this larger channel in there and then they'll overhang like that and then hopefully this bending arm here with just the 5 8 inch face will bend that up with the extra rigidity that this flange is already going to have in the part. So by bending these first it's going to give me a part here. This, this bend here is going to give me a part that's going to resist flexing uh, as much as I can get it to resist flexing and then I will uh, bend the flanges up and I've got the measurement lines all laid out. The test piece turned out perfectly. So as long as I use the same bending lines, this part should work. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up and we're going to give it a shot. All right. I don't know how well you can see this in the camera here, but this is the part blank for the uh, main landing gear channel that uh, I showed you the test pattern for. So this huge piece, which is 1105 millimeters by 293 millimeters of 40 thousandths material, this is what ultimately becomes the gear channel. And so you can see some buffing marks and stuff on here. My 40 thousandths is starting to get pretty beat up here in the shop, so I'm trying to use it up, use up uh, the, part, the rest of it uh, uh, so that I, I'm trying to finish off the parts that I need in uh, this thickness so that I can put it away permanently and then I, I won't be banging it around here in, in the shop anymore. But the buffing marks are just taking out some of the scratches that you can feel kind of rough with your fingernail. I use a 240 grit flapper wheel on the drill press to do this and um, it's you know basically just, it doesn't take much, if you just use light gentle pressure, it doesn't take much more off than say a scotch Bright pad would, just a little bit more than that. But this is uh, marked on two sides. So you can see here I've got 23 millimeter flanges here. So those are going to be what are get but what get bent first. That's going to bend this into a U channel, um, and then I'm going to flip it over, and those flanges are going to overhang the face of that bending arm after I take the uh, uh, three inch angle off of it. So because I'm bending this in kind of a strange pattern, normally you would have the full part up underneath the brake, and you would only bend the flange up. If you do that with a standard bending brake. Uh, typically the setback lines that Zenith provides in the drawing drawings are going to be accurate. Uh, Maybe a little bit off because your bending brake has different bending characteristics. But in general, <clears throat> for industrial equipment, those setback lines are, are where they're supposed to be. Now because I'm actually bending the part up instead of the flange, I'm clamping the flange and then bending the entire part up. Those bending lines are all totally wrong. Um, and if you study the construction standards and see how uh, the, the sheet metal actually bends, uh, you can see why that is. The part that gets bent up is the part that actually kind of gains some length as you go. So the bend line kind of goes upward as you bend up. And that causes the part that you're bending up to be taller than what your measured line is when it's a flat piece. So uh, if you've got any questions about that, you can, you can uh, message me and I can go into more detail and I might be able to make a video on that but essentially because I'm clamping the flange and bending the part up uh, the bend lines have to be uh, done in a kind of kind of weird way so the test piece that I made that I showed you a minute ago that is the um, the bend lines I discovered to make that part exactly to the to the specifications so the part I'm nervous about, of course, is this is a huge piece of 40 thousandths material. It's expensive. If I ruin it, um, you know, that's a lot of scrap material. So I'm hoping that I've got enough clamping force. I can tell you already I've bent some longer channels in the 40 thousandths, like these pieces here. These are shorter. This is the uh, side channel cover for, the for one of the channels in the fuselage. This piece is actually shorter than this piece, and it really strained the... Uh, break. Uh, it bent just fine, but it, you could see the center of the brake was kind of buckling a little bit and not wanting to hold together. And the reason is because there's no uh, piano hinge down the center of it anymore. So all the strength has to be held by the actual, just 
uh, raw material across the length of it and then the two hinges at either end, but there's really no other way to do it. And industrial brakes are built that way as well, but they have you know, much more robust um, fixtures and bending arms and clamping arms. So we're going to see if this works. I hope I don't ruin this. I'm going to pause the video, get it set up, and uh, we'll do some bends. Thank <laughs> you.